Hi, this is Jared from Shunome, and today I want to do a quick video that looks at the custom objects I have embedded in the Shunome ARCHICAD template. Most of these have been in the template for a while, but I don't know that people necessarily know to look for them or know what's going on with them. So let's start. First off, let's go up to File, Libraries and Objects, and what am I looking for? Library Manager. Sorry, I always just do a keyboard shortcut and I want to do it. So, okay, Library Manager here. Libraries and project, you can see I've got all the library packs, the Archicad Legacy Objects USA. We've talked about that in other videos. And up here, I've got the embedded library. And if you click over to this tab, you can see I've got them organized into folders. Uh, we've got annotation objects, objects that are you know 3D objects. And then this here, we're not going to talk about are just textures. So in the template, I've got like a bunch of different Tile textures I use often, some stucco, so like the mirror one, solar panel, all these are connected to surfaces in the template, but it's just good to show that you all that they're there. And if you add textures to, or JPEGs or PNGs to your own version of the template or your own template, it organizes into folders to make your life easier. Okay, let's get started. So first off, there's this guy here, which is the Noguchi coffee table favorite coffee table in the world. It's just a 2D object. There's no 3D. It's on my to-do list to make a 3D version of this, but uh, this was just taken in from, I don't know, a SketchUp file or an AutoCAD file, or I found it somewhere on the internet years ago. The 3D didn't look good, but 2D looked good. And I like to be able to show my clients a good sized coffee table in their living rooms. And why not encourage people to imagine their living room with the greatest coffee table in the world? So that's that. Next up is this, which is actually a railing, but in this railing, the only thing in it is this coat hook. So I made a coat hook, saved it as a railing element. So if I just eyedrop of this, now I can just run out as long as I want, get as many coat hooks as I need. You can go back here and set the segment distance. I should have practiced this before doing that. But basically the settings on this for how far apart they are. Oh, here it is. Equal distribution, one foot three. If we do say three feet, now we'll get fewer coat hooks. Two feet, you get more. So it's a nice easy way to just lay out hooks. You could imagine saving out a different object if you wanted instead of hooks to be knobs or I don't know, any sort of repetitive thing you want corbels using the railing tool. And that's just as simple. If I go totally off script, you, I just made a slab, you go file, libraries and objects, save selection as, and then you go down here and say, this was a railing post. So we can just do that actually, call it new post. Just click through all the settings because that's outside of what we want to do. And then new post, click that. And now Maybe there's an error there for why it didn't work, but it should have. Oh yeah, there it is. Um, it's just not showing in 2D and I don't want to figure out why, but now I have railing posts, which look like that. Okay. Let's delete that. Let's delete that. Let's move on. Next up. This is one of my newer objects. It is a smoke detector. So the default smoke detector in ARCHICAD is ugly. And then in ARCHICAD 28, when we moved to library packs, they got rid of the 2D only smoke detector. So I made my own. You can do symbolic projected representation. You can choose which device style and it will change the symbol. Uh, it can rotate about the, you know, the axes. So we go to projected and hit okay. You can see that that thing is rotating in space. So you can put this on any sort of slope ceiling. If you go to symbolic, you'll just get the nice simple symbol. And then also you can turn off the detail level in 3D. So if you just want it to be a 2D symbol and not worry about 3D, you have that. We're going to come back to this one at the end and talk about GDL a little bit. Next one, bathroom accessories. My goal is to add more bathroom accessories to this over time, but right now it's just a toilet paper holder and a towel ring. Again, you can rotate about the axis in case you need to do that for some reason. You can turn on and off the 3D. You can change its surface and then you can also go projected or symbolic. You can see in symbolic, I've just cleaned up the 2D symbol a little bit. 
Okay, next up, freestanding bathtub. These come up often in projects. Uh, recently, I needed a soaking tub, and so I now have two options, standard and soaking. I've set the size to be fixed, so if you change it to a soaking tub, it is that 2 foot 2 by 4 foot 3, whereas the standard is 3 by 5, but you can also make that adjustable, and now you can make it kind of whatever crazy size you want. If I wanted to be able to lock it so that it is the two generic sizes that I know are good starting points for a big soaking, soaking tub and a big like, deep soaking tub. Again, 2D representation, change surfaces, rotate around X, Y axis. You're starting to see that there's some things that are just standard across all my objects. That's one of the tricks of GDL is once you start learning some things, you can just add that functionality to all your objects. Okay, next up, hand shower. This has been in there a long time, uh, but I've made some tweaks to it. One is changing where the connection is, so to the side or to below. We can change where the shower head is, because why not? And then you can also change where that connection is. If you're set to connection below, you can set it, you know, you can move it up and down. There's some I would love to be able to take this and be able to just drag it around, but the math gets really complicated with the hose, and that's beyond my capabilities at the moment. Again, 2D representation, symbolic, projected, change surfaces. This here is a pot filler. I love pot fillers, use them often. So it's just complicated. You can rotate it, you can change the angle of the arms, and you can do symbolic or projected for it's simple. There's some there's some more features I'd love to add to this, but I've just it's beyond my GDK, GDL capabilities to get this thing to rotate properly uh, at its different pivot points. This next one, shower controls, one of my favorites. I've got three styles: same rotating, same symbolic, same surface change. These are so great to just drop in there, and they look they look beautiful. These are the actual shower controls in my house, so those are nice. And then this one is a shower head. You've got a short, long tub, and then tub freestanding. Long term, I won't actually make the pedestal that would be freestanding for a tub filler, but right now, the difference is it just doesn't have that gusset play at the end, so I can easily place it within a column and, you know, have the... I, I build this out of a column, and then I place that there, and then I just, like, SEO that or whatever and call it a day. One day that will all be one object embedded in that, but I'm not there yet. Back to this, I also have this extra length. So if for some reason you need an extra long tub filler, you can change the length. Or if you want an extra long, short shower head, you can do that as well. Okay, what next? Here, I did a parking space object. This is just 2D. Uh, it allows you two rows of text change some to show or hide that X and then some background and some some pens. This is a very early object they did. It's just designed to be a fixed shape because this is the required parking space in Seattle. Maybe one day I'll add more features to it, but this does exactly what I need on every project, which is plot this on a site plan to verify that I have the space I need and to tell the city that I have the space I need. Okay, let's look at this guy here. This is a simple roof slope symbol. It just will adjust itself to be the numbers. And then sometimes the symbol scale, I want to be able to change the relationship between the line and the numbers. So I have that changed. And then there's the text. I can also turn on and off a prefix. So I could put like almost six and a half. And then there's a text. So a nice little object. I'm going to come back to these two at the end because those are a little special. Here, we're just talking about door leaves. Right here, I have my bookcase door, which I love. Uh, bookcase door is the coolest thing. Uh, unfortunately, in had 28, the frame has to be the same thickness as the door, which is annoying, but that is what it is. Gets the point across. Here is garage door. In ARCHICAD 28 and earlier versions, the door leaf style for garage doors are really crummy. Like, 
this is what I want. A simple four panel, clean. Sometimes I want this with frosted glass. So I've added that to my template. Now, if I open up design options and turn on object creation primitives down here, these are the slabs that I use to create the bookshelf door and those two garage doors. So with my template, if you needed a bigger garage door, you could, you know, extend this, select that, file, libraries and objects, save selection as door leaf, which is somewhere in this list down here. And then you can easily get a different size one. Or if you needed, for some reason, a five panel door, or if you just wanted to use this to make a new person door and you wanted to, you know, do that, you know, you can, you can use these elements to create your own custom door. So I think I've been, actually, I'm pretty sure I have an old video on making custom door panels. So I won't go into more detail of that, but these are the primitives used to create those existing library objects. So it's easy to make more. Okay. Let's, let's actually go back to this object real quick. And I'm going to do command option O, which is open object. You can also go to libraries and objects, open object. And let's look at the GDL real quick of this. Cause I just want to show you guys that if you're not doing GDL, I highly recommend starting to get into it. Start simple. If you look at all my objects here, these are basically all just cylinders, bunches and bunches of cylinders and maybe like an elbow or something. So if you look at the 3D script in this, go down here, it's just like rotating hotspot cylinder, move the starting point, add a cylinder, add a cylinder, add a cylinder. So it's just a bunch of cylinders. And then there's some, there's some more, it's a little more to it, but it's basically, I learned how to model a cylinder with GDL, rotate it, and then move it to the position I wanted to. I learned everything I know about GDL through the GDL cookbook, which you can find online. I think I've got some links to it in my blog and then on land.info, James Murray just is the greatest GDL person ever. Anyways, so you can see the text, the script for the 3D is really straightforward beyond the scope of the video to talk about all those details. But similarly here, you know, the 2D script might look overwhelming, but it's like at a hot spot or if this, then that, if not do this, then this, then that's it. The 2D symbols are just all there on different layers. And let's see what else there, there's some, there's some things with parameters, but it's a really simple object. Once you know some basics, every time I do a new object, I have to relearn and remember everything and it comes back fast and I just crib stuff from previous objects. So the next time I do an object, I'm going to copy and paste this. And which means if you want to do an object, you can just copy one of these and all the script is in the template. So you can use this as a starting point. Okay. Last two objects I want to talk about are these two. I did not make these. This align symbol is from my friend, Jeff. This uh, center line symbol is from James Murray of onland.info. I love these symbols both so much and i'm really grateful to both jeff and james for letting me put them in the template so this aligned symbol is exactly what you imagine it's text it allows you to align things so you can just say uh you know this wall and that wall right just just great there's some probably added functionality i don't use in here text above and below orienting the text offsets font size um font type and then uh, this centerline symbol, I just love to be able to just, you know, put on a door, put some dimensions and like know that that's to the center line. So great. Seems like a crime that this isn't in the basic ARCHICAD library. Uh, you can change the size of the text. You can change the font. You can make the font bold. You can put the symbol, the CL symbol on either side, and then you can, you know, do some other things to the text. That's it. It's amazing. You can see it says centerline sim JM16. So James updated this version of it in Archicad 16. I think there was a version from, I don't know, before the dinosaurs. So that's all I've got today. I hope you learned something and can take advantage of these objects in my template. Thank you very much.